Hi there, here are 10 tips for when you're writing a bachelor or master thesis. The first one is to start writing early. Don't leave the writing up to the very end and then get into the situation of a mad panic rush as you have to actually produce text. Produce text from the very beginning. Even if you don't have results, you can already work on the introduction and the discussion section of your thesis. It's very important for you to take notes and to produce text all along basically from the, from the very beginning of also working in your thesis, but make sure that you don't cut and paste from other papers. When you read a paper that is relevant to your thesis and you want to include that paper in your introduction and your discussion, make sure that you produce your own text and also produce always your notes in English if English is not your first language, but more importantly, do produce your own text. This way you avoid plagiarism automatically. It is very important to get the rules straight for your particular school because they may vary a lot. Are there page limits? Are there expectations for the language? Are there different things you need to include as part of your thesis like certain declarations? So basically, and also all the formalities, how this is supposed to be formatted, get these things straight so you don't have any ugly surprises down the road. Communicate with your mentor or supervisor or immediate supervisor what is important to them. What do they value in a thesis or what are sort of their pet peeves? Because that may vary quite a bit and it's important to address them as you write things. Normally what people value, for example, is let's say in the discussion section, you express very much your own thoughts on what you have found and maybe also some outlook because it it shows these are really your thoughts. But this can vary quite a bit and so it's important to get that straight. Make sure that as you write, you use a reference managing software like Zotero or EndNote or whatever you have available to you to make sure that in the end the references appear in a consistent format and are also cited in the text in a consistent format. Now compared to the research papers that you will be reading, the introduction to a thesis is typically a bit more detailed and it typically starts a bit broader than a, than a paper in a, in a research journal. So this is best judged if you actually look at some other thesis from the lab that you're working in to see how they did it. You will often find that they start broader and explain a bit more background than is typical for a research paper in that field. The same is also for the method section. The method section I very often written in very concise language, mostly referring also to other papers in a research paper. But in a thesis, the methods are usually more detailed. I mean, don't exaggerate the level of detail, um, but it's definitely more detailed than in a research paper. If it makes sense, it's super helpful to produce very small, simple figures and graphics to explain things. Like for example, the layout of your thesis or the various steps you went through for a particular protocol or for a particular experiment to use a simple graphic that you have made yourself to explain experimental designs or something like that because that makes it very much more accessible to the person that has to read it and it shows that you've put in the effort to make these little graphics. This always comes across as very positive when people have done that. They don't need to be pieces of art. <laughs> they can be very simple, just box and arrow graphics, but I think it is so much easier to read a thesis that has these things in there and where you can already tell that person thought about what they're doing than if it's just text. Speaking of figures, you will most likely have uh, data and results figures. The figures really stand out from your thesis. The eye is drawn to the pages with the figures. So in order to make an excellent impression, make sure your figures are really state of the art. And also that everything in that figure is explained well. What are the error bars? What are the axis labels? Make sure they are all easily readable. Use a pleasant, <laughs> A color scheme, not wild colors. And just make sure that these figures make an, a professional impression. That makes a huge difference, actually. It's also a really good idea to have the figure le legend or the, or the caption really be standalone so that they contain sentences like, this is the result of this figure, not like, this is the effect of something, rather. 
I mean, this is uh, makes the figure a more standalone item. What I think is super important is that very often these bachelor or master's theses, they are produced in the context of collaborative work in the lab, where, for example, a student analyzed part of an experiment that maybe was set up by somebody else. And so a very important feature in terms of academic honesty and fair reporting is that students make very clear in their thesis what their part was. This can be done in various ways and it's probably a good idea to do it in multiple ways, but you can do it in an acknowledgement, a separate acknowledgement section, or you can also make it clear in, in the methods or in a separate part of your thesis altogether, what was actually your contribution and what did you use from other people. I think that is just very important because otherwise if you talk about an experiment for which you analyze some response variables that was already set up by somebody else and you do not mention that this experiment was set up by somebody else, just as an example, then you are basically suggesting <laughs> implicitly that you did this experiment, which you did not. And that is dishonest. And finally, do avoid at all costs long passages of unstructured text in, for example, the introduction or the discussion. Make sure that you use subsections so you divide the text into much more easily digestible pieces. This makes the thesis so much more attractive and, and readable and accessible. And additionally, <laughs> by using these subsections, you force yourself to organize your writing much more. So you make sure that you then only address things that fit to this particular subheader, let's say, in your introduction section. Well, those are my 10 points for writing a master's or bachelor thesis. I'd love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments if um, you think other things are also important in your experience, either as a person that advises students or somebody who has recently gone through a thesis. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.